Well, hello. I'm your host, Tracy Stone, from the Lawrenceville Perfect Guide. What a wonderful show we have for you tonight. I promise you, we often say this, but tonight is going to be extremely special. We've got some wonderful guests. Uh, we have Babby Mason is with us, Eric Baxton is with us, and Danny Mary and Voices of Lee are with us. And I promise you, this Christmas music is going to be amazing. This group, they've, we've been listening as they've been warming up. It's been so exciting to hear them sing and the joy of the season. Don't you love Christmas? The season, some of you are saying, no, I don't love Christmas. There's too much traffic. But listen, take the time tonight. Call somebody and listen, tell them. You want to join in with Atlanta Live to hear this group and these guests. You will be blessed. As always, there's a number at the bottom of the screen. At any time during this broadcast, you want to pray or you have a prayer request or something's going on in your life and you just want to reach out to somebody. We have people standing by waiting to believe with you that your miracle your breakthrough, your answer could come now. I believe just like you believe that God is able supernaturally to make up the difference from where we are and where we need to be. Don't give up too soon. Jesus is going to work it out for you. In just a moment, we're going to go and we're going to listen in as the voices of Lee sing and minister for us. And they're going to take us to high heights in worship. They're going to bring the, this, maybe you haven't got in the mood yet. Maybe the spirit of Christmas hasn't got a hold of you. I am praying that before this evening is up, that the spirit of Christmas is going to grab your heart. Let's go now as the voices of lead lead us into the first Noel. Shining in Well, praise God. Thank you, Danny and Voices of League. They're starting out. They're getting us into season. We're so glad to have Eric Buxton with us. Thank you so much for coming down with us tonight. It's a joy to be here. It is an honor to meet you and to 
share the similarities that we've had in the past and to understand that our, our paths have crossed and we just didn't know it. We didn't it. know it. We didn't know it. <laughs> but how the Lord is using you and your family and your talents and your gifts, it's just been amazing to sit and share. Um, introduce yourself to the audience tonight and just tell them a little bit about you and who you are and where you're at and okay. what you do. I'm Eric Buxton and uh, I actually lived here in Atlanta uh, for nearly 20 years and, um, and our connection is uh, that I used to be on staff there at the Lawrenceville Church of God That's right. several years ago, but, mm -hmm. uh, but I know that uh, street very well. Uh, I am currently a uh, redemptive arts pastor at um, the Fort Mill Church of God in Fort Mill, South Carolina. And, uh, and we're just, uh, just there just a little over a year and, uh, and we're having a wonderful time uh, just enjoying how God uh, is using us to uh, impact people's lives and to impact the uh, community and, and the culture. Um, so I, I'm married and I have three great kids. I have uh, two kids who are actually born in December, so we're going to have a 12-year-old, God help us, yes. and a 9-year-old in just a couple of weeks. And I have a 3-year-old who rules the roost, and there's no surprise <laughs> about that. So I bet. So... Uh, fine arts, you, you compose, you write, you, you do it all. Well, I, 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 sometimes you do things out of necessity. <laughs> I understand. Uh, but I, I really have been blessed. Uh, I've loved music all my life, and uh, I, I often tell the story that even as, the, as a small child, I was uh, under the piano with my grandmother who played piano in my church, mm -hmm. and, and so I can't remember a day that I wasn't playing piano as soon as I was able to reach up and touch those keys. Wow. And, uh, and just so, a God given talent. Absolutely. And so, uh, so that's been a real blessing. And, um, I went on to study music and I t taught school for a long time. I taught here in the Atlanta area for 12 years, yeah. uh, and, uh, and have served obviously in, in, in church and, and just enjoy leveraging. You know, one of the interesting things about, about music yes. is that music, you know, it crosses every strata of life. Yes, it does. Uh, and you can find it in the lowest places and you can find it in the highest places. But I'm convinced that God so really intended music to penetrate the heart and can bypass the mind oftentimes. Mm, that's good. Uh, and really capture people at, at the soul level. And so as much study as I've done on music and as many uh, great opportunities as I've had in music, the thing that, uh, that challenges me and pushes me and encourages me the most is to know that whenever I engage, I'm engaging the heavenlies in reaching somebody's heart. And if you can capture their heart, the mind will follow. There you and go. So, uh, th so that's just been a real joy of my life. And you do that through the worship and the music. I've always said it like this. The dividing line in every church is worship. Mm. That's the dividing mm -hmm. line. And how to bridge the gap from people liking one genre over another. You, you've, been, no. you've managed that. Absolutely. Well, you know, one of the things that you, that you contend with in any group is person A likes A and person B likes B. But... But the glue that keeps this all together, regardless of the style that you prefer, uh, is that Christ is at the center of it. And, uh, and, and in, in worship, one of the things I challenge our people to consider okay. is that worship is uh, not a song. And when we consume ourselves with the idea of worship, we have to really squeeze out the song as the soul of worship. Because the soul of worship is Jesus. That's right. The soul of worship is our connection with God. And once we lock that down, you can worship with a Southern gospel or mm -hmm. black gospel or contemporary, yes. whatever contemporary means. Now, I'm old enough to remember when that really scared people, but, but it doesn't really matter the genre if you lock down the concept that worship is about connecting with God. And then you obviously have to, you know, you have to wage the war sometimes with the uh, minds of men on mm -hmm. what style we should be doing. But, if, but uh, one of the things I kind of stress is that heaven will be full of people who've never heard your favorite song. That's true. And so if they got to heaven not ever hearing your favorite song, maybe your favorite song isn't the most important thing. Jesus is the most important thing. That, that's good. So you, you 
there at the church, I assume you have a full choir and I do. We have uh, about 70, 70 so folks who show up week after week and say they want to sing for Jesus, and, okay. <laughs> and we engage that. <laughs> have a great band. Uh, I mean, you know, we uh, use a term that may not be used in a lot of churches, but we use the term redemptive arts in our in our space. Yeah, that was a new term. I, I never heard that. <clears throat> and and one of the reasons that I, I really uh, embraced that some years ago is that um, it's the notion that God takes the arts and uh, uses it to redeem creation. He redeems humanity. Yes. Uh, and so we express, you know, we, we have, again, we have a choir, we have a band. We have uh, a, a full drama team. We that have that, I'm sure. um, a pantomime team. We have, you know, our youngest kids uh, do every form of art. Uh, you know, we have some great photographers who are able to capture. You know, one of the things that we seek to do is, as I said, to capture the heart and to inspire people to look outside of themselves and look outside of the mundane of life. And whether we do that with a great photograph, uh, we have an, one, of the, one of my choir members uh, who, who's been singing for 70 years, but she is a brilliant painter. Really? She, oh my goodness, she can capture a sunrise or capture the features of a human face in a way that just blows the mind and you watch that. And, and so God takes all of those things to redeem his most prized possession, and that is the soul of his babies, the souls of men. And so our objective as we go through uh, using our arts is is to to watch God whether He does it in the moment. Sometimes we'll sing a song and it just grabs you and you're changed. You're you're, tra you're changed immediately and you want to be different. Sometimes it takes a little drip drip that you kind of hear that song and you see that display of artistry, and God just kind of little by little tugs away at your heart and then He redeems it. He recaptures it for his glory. Mm -hmm. And so, so our perspective is that God takes our art that is given to us and he redeems, um, redeems humans uh, through, through art. So you have you just totally rethought and rebooted or reset the concept of worship and that it embraces it all, mm -hmm. the creativity, because a lot of times churches and uh, ministries put aside certain people and they feel like they don't have a place. Mm because they may do drama or they may do things that's out of the box. Right. I mean, I, I, we listen to people like what we just heard, Voices of Lee, and uh, we see the young man standing over there that plays drums with his mouth. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. In another setting, people are like, well, that can't be. Right. But in God's eyes, he gave him the talent. Absolutely, and he uses everything to redeem. There's nothing beyond his ability to redeem it. He redeems the gifts such that he can redeem the people. And so there, there's, there's, there's no, nothing out of bounds for his ability to redeem. Yeah, he gave us this earth and he said that um, it is good mm -hmm. and that we have dominion. Right. You know, I, I often get frustrated sometimes with, with church mentality that we won't allow certain things. And I know we got to be holy with it. Sure, absolutely. But there's so much creativity that we keep out of the church mm -hmm. that we, we need to release right. ministry. One of the dangerous things uh, that the church does is it stiff arms creativity many times. Sure, and uh, the world's waiting. And the world, and, and the reality is God gave us, I mean, let's think about this for just a second. Okay. God, out of his mind, decided when there was nothing okay. that there would be something. And so he spoke and he flung and he pointed and he called out. Uh, that's creativity. Yes. And so then this God, after creating all of these things, animals, the terrain, the, the oceans, all these mountains, then he said, let us make man. And he fashioned something that had not existed before and said, that is good. That's creativity. So the God who would go through all that trouble and then make us in his image, as he said, would, would it, we're cheating God if we aren't seeking to be as creative in expressing who he is and what he's called out of our lives uh, if we don't do that. I, I just can't agree anymore with that because I, I just agree that we need to allow people to use the gifts. Absolutely. And don't, don't put the lid on the jar. Let the jar be open. Absolutely. Let's see what God will do in people's lives. Maybe there's some music pastors or leaders of worship that are 
and maybe even pastors that are listening and they're like, oh my goodness, this is liberating to hear. What would you say to them that are maybe struggling or just trying to move from point A to B, going to C, but mm -hmm. can't get off A to B? Right. How do they get there? And talk to, sure. speak to them to that. Well, first I would say you, you can't move the people any faster than you can educate the people. Okay. And I'm an old classroom teacher, and so I take, I take the, uh, the approach that it's my job to inform, inspire, and encourage. It's work. And so there is, yes, there is a great deal of work. You're not going to snap your finger and things happen. You've been a very successful pastor, and you've, you've seen churches grow from nothing to, to great things, and you can attest that it takes effort. And in this endeavor, we have to sometimes shake ourselves from you know, our, our upbringing, as they say, to embrace the fact that God is seeking to reach a world of people who, um, who don't know him. And, uh, and creativity, the arts are a great way to reach out to people because, as, as I said earlier, if we can capture their hearts with something that inspires them and, and causes them to say, ah, then they're in a great position for God to do something great and transform their whole life. So you would start out by starting educating. You want to teach the people that this matters. Mm -hmm. um, and as you said, you know, there are some churches that really kind of put a lid on what, what kind of arts can be used in a, in a church. But uh, the Bible is replete. I mean, you take a run through Psalms and you're going to find dancers. Yes. I know that may offend some, but you're going to find dancers. And, and God painted the sky and so did men. They painted this, you know, and so you got dancers and singers and, and, and instrumentalist um, orators. And so we want to use all of those things. And so first you got to teach the people that this is okay. The Bible helps you on that. You don't have to, you don't have to be creative to do this. You have to reinvent Just the wheel. Read Just the Bible teach, read the and Bible. then teach There it. you go. Right. And then you have to uh, encourage the people to press into the gifts that God's given them. Let them hear from leadership that it's okay. God's made you that way. He's given you the gift of dance then let's see how we can use this to glorify God. He's giving you the gift of songwriting. Um, you know, you can write a song about a tree or you can write a song about the tree that, that changed our lives. And, uh, and so you just, you just, you have to encourage them then to grow into the gifts that God's given them. And then you unleash them. Mm -hmm. You let them go. Now that can be scary. Yes. I mean, I, I'm, I'm certain I've scared many a pastor uh, <laughs> <laughs> where they were wondering, what is he going to do? Um, but, but you unleash them. If, if, if you're teaching all along and they're hearing your heart and they're feeling that you are encouraging God in them, they're going to seek to please you. They're going to seek to please the people that God has given to you to lead. And they're going to seek to please God with their gifts. And so it's a, it's, it's a license to be free in the spirit to do what God's gifted us to do. Now, Brother Eric, I, I'm sorry I had to take that moment to let you teach <laughs> because I want I, a man of your caliber and abilities to teach. Th that needed to happen mm. because people needed to know a systematic point A, B, C, how I can get there. What's the hottest, latest thing you're doing right now? Maybe, Chris, something you're doing. What are you doing for Christmas this year? Let's well, hear it. One of the cool things that, that we get to do in my church uh, is that we... Um, you know, we, we've actually already had our programs, as it were, for Christmas, uh, but we started the, the season of Advent, you know, and, and we don't often talk about that in our Protestant churches as much, um, but it was it really the season of waiting, the season of anticipating mm -hmm. the coming of the Savior. And so we, we did a great musical um, at the top of, of the month and, uh, and had the choir and the band and dancers and Orators, as I said, mm -hmm. we throw all the stuff on the wall and let God get glory out of all of it. And so we did that. And then just last week we had uh, had a play, and so our actors got to um, to to portray the greatest Christmas pageant ever and the best Christmas pageant ever. And that's in a hilarious show. You should see it sometime. Um, but we so we, we we just start our season out uh, with an array of of arts uh, to uh, to to tune the hearts of the people. Uh, and what I like to do is to set them up to appreciate that, you know, there are presents to be bought. Everybody knows that. Yeah, and there are yeah. families to visit, whether you like, it or, like not, it or not. <laughs> you're going to go see somebody that you didn't want to see. But if we can start the season remembering that it's Christ who came for us. He's Emmanuel. He is God with us. And so we started out that way and we can get through this season knowing that he is the center Wow, thank you so much. That, that's, that's so encouraging. Let's go now to the voices as they sing the Carol of Bells, I Pray on Christmas.
Pray on Christmas. I love that. Thank you, Danny, and the voices of Lee continuing to bring that Christmas spirit in. Remember, that number's on the screen. Dial that number. Let somebody pray with you and believe that this night could be your night of a breakthrough. Well, it's time now for none other than Babby Mason. You are so kind. Thank we you, are, sir. We are just blessed and Blessed honored. to be here. Oh, Thank my you. Goodness. I, this is a real treat. No, it's my treat. I am sitting, I've listened to your music from afar Amen. for a long time. Praise you have God. You blessed me, my family. Thank you for your ministry. Amen. To God be the glory. He is. That's what I can say. God is good, isn't he? He is amazing. You are a gift from God. Thank you, sir. Praise we God. We appreciate your talent that you have chosen to honor the Lord. Yes. With that gift that he gave you. Yes. And not only do you sing and not only are you still on the road and traveling and doing what God's called you to do. That's right. But, but you've, you, you teach and you mentor. I don't think people may or may not know that you do the things that you do. Well, you know, there came a season where... Um, people just began to ask me, Pastor. They, you know, they say, "Well, look, I, I think God's called me to sing. Can you, sh can you show me how to get started in ministry?" Yeah. Um, they say, "Hey, I, I write songs. Can you critique my songs and let me know if they're any good?" And we were just meeting with people, having lunches with people, and they were coming by our office and coming by our house. And so my husband and I realized, you know, there's something to that. So we started hosting weekend conferences where we could actually pour into the lives of singers and writers. And that was about 30 years ago. And uh, we have just been doing just that. It's a conference called The Inner Circle. It's a weekend conference. There are two tracks now, one re weekend expressly for singers who have a desire to be in music ministry. They might want to travel. They may want to record. They want to write their own songs. They want to know how to jumpstart a ministry. They even want to know if they're called. I mean, we pour into their lives. We ask them of our other professional friends, Christian attorneys, other singers, writers, producers, people that are in the ministry and the business of music mm -hmm. to pour into their lives over the course of a weekend. And then we also have another weekend in the inner circle just for songwriters where we will sit and with a whole room full of songwriters at varying degrees of proficiency and teach them how to write a good lyric. How do you write a beautiful melody? How do you write a melody and a lyric that are compatible? Then after you've written that song, how do you promote it and record it and make a demo of it or shop it or put it on the internet and, and share it with the world and maybe even find a way to make a living from doing what you do? Mm -hmm. So we, we do all of that and pour in uh, to others our, our experiences, our abilities, uh, just trying to pass the torch of ministry to the next generation. That's, that's amazing. As we've watched your career through the years, singing it to presidents, to your awards, Amen. to the accolades Amen. that people have laid at God you. God has been so good. <laughs> and it's, been, it's an amazing journey. But, but see, what's more amazing about that is your heart. Amen. Because here you are, an accomplished vocalist, an accomplished artist. Amen. But yet you're so grounded that you take the time to pour into the next. Well, you know, Pastor, I think some things are taught, other things are caught. Yeah. Uh, I come from five generations of preachers and pastors. Mm -hmm. My great grandfather, my grandfather, my father, my oldest brother, and his son wow. were and are preachers and pastors. And um, my parents, early, very early in my life, uh, just began to uh, call out, you know, they began to affirm the gifts that God has given me very, very early in life. I remember a Sunday morning uh, when our current church pianist, um, her husband got called away to another city in a job. I had been playing the piano as a little grade school kid, you know, mm -hmm. playing nursery rhymes in the classroom and stuff like that. 
But that Sunday, that her first Sunday that she was called away, they moved to another city. Daddy looked at me and he said, Bab, today you're going to play. Wow, just like that. Just like that. No no warning, no setup, no nothing, preacher. Oh, he my just said, goodness. Bab, today is your day. Talking about in, in, in season and in out. In season and out. And so um, I could only play in one key because our church didn't use, we had hymnals, but basically, you know, to read the words, the responsive reading in the back of the hymnal, things like that. But we didn't use uh, a lot of printed music. Everything was sung by ear in my daddy's church. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of like being thrown in the deep end of the swimming pool. It was sink or swim. I could only play in one key. That was the key of C. And I had a, a very limited vocabulary of chords. I could play a C chord and an F chord and a G chord and back down to a C chord. And that was basically it. But my dad, our, our church, they were very patient with me. They were very um, uh, affirming and confirming of my gifts and talents. And my gifts and talents began to grow. And then they began to flourish, and God began to open up doors of opportunity, and one thing has led to another thing. I'll tell you, this is how you know that, uh, you know, where, where God guides, he provides, I heard somebody say. Mm -hmm. And where he guides you into a path, he will provide opportunity for you to flourish in that gift. Mm -hmm. And I've been playing for my daddy's church almost 20 years, and then I met this man who moved to my hometown, and uh, we uh, met and started dating, and then he decided to pick up and move to Atlanta. So I taught school for a year, my very first year of teaching school. Then we got married, and I moved to Georgia. And uh, I, a ministry had been, began to, to be budding there in my home state of Michigan. But when we moved to Georgia, we kind of had to pick up and start all over again. Well, one day, my husband was coming home from his job. He, um, he passed this church called Mount Perrin Church of God, on uh, Highway 41 that, that goes through Atlanta. Absolutely. And uh, you, you're familiar with Mount Perrin. We yes. love We love Mount Perrin. But my husband came home that day and he said, hey, there's this big church around the corner. Let's go over there and see if we can't get and uh, find an opportunity for you to sing. Well, we walked into the pastor's office without an appointment. And uh, the lady said, well, Pastor, Dr. Walker is a very busy man. You can see him a couple months from now, about eight weeks from now. My husband said, well, what about the music pastor? Is, is he available? She said, well, he's with somebody right now. My husband said, well, what about the youth pastor? Is he available? She said, well, he's out to lunch right now. My husband is a very determined man. He said, what if I want to get saved? Is there somebody here who can lead me, <laughs> lead me to Jesus? She, she saw his determination. So she said, listen, go over to the Family Life Center. The singles pastor is over there, Dr. Uh, pastor Mike Atkins. Mm -hmm. And she said, go over there and see him. We sat outside of his office waiting for him to wrap up a conversation with someone. He was very gracious. I uh, gave him a copy of my album back then that I had made when I was in college. My type, handwritten uh, typed bio. I think it had a few white out marks yeah. and stuff like that from back in the day. And um, we had a nice conversation with him. And it was kind of like a don't call me, I'll call you kind of conversation. He I've was very there. gracious. You've been there. Yes. But on the way out, Pastor, there was a piano that was pressed up against the wall in the meeting room outside of his office. Mm -hmm. My piano was in storage. And I had, I, I play the piano every day. It's like food and water to me. And I hadn't been able to play the piano because my piano was in storage. And I said to, to Mike Atkins, I said, listen, can I just go over here play a little bit on your piano because I just need to. And he said, sure, help yourself. So I went over there, sat down at the piano, just me and Jesus, just a sweet moment of worship, just for my own soul that was just hungry and thirsty and needing to worship. And I played a chorus of, Jesus is the answer mm. for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Well, after I was finished, Mike Atkins came out of his office and he said, what are you doing tomorrow night? I said, nothing. He said, well, come up tomorrow night and play for the singles. There was a young guy there whose name was Jesse Prophet. I'll never forget it. Jesse ran the coffee house at Calvary Chapel, Atlanta on Saturday nights. He said, what are you doing Saturday night? I said, nothing. He said, well, come up Saturday night and sing some songs in the coffee house. I was there and the pastor was there, Laverne Campbell. Laverne said, well, what are you doing in the morning? I said, nothing. He said, well, come and sing at, in the Sunday morning worship service. And th so you see how... God just allows your gift to make room for you. Mm. And he just began to allow my gift to make room for me. We've never had a booking agent. Uh, we've never had a manager outside of my husband. But you see, God continues, even after 35 years of ministry, 
he continues to make room for me. And the, the rooms just keep, keep getting bigger and bigger and the responsibilities just, but, they're, but they all come from, first of all, a desire and then the ability that came with me into the earth. You know, I don't have to look for more talent. You don't have to look for more gifts. They're already in you. That's why they're called gifts. You didn't ask for them. They were bestowed upon you. And it's our response and our responsibility to align our gifts, our talents with God's assignment, alignment for mm -hmm. his assignment, and, and then step out in obedience and do what he's called you to do. Mm. And that's what I'm trying to do with my life. Wow. Let me just process what you just said because that is so real to me. Yes. And to so many listeners that are listening that are trying to connect with their vision and their purpose in life. Yes. The mandate, the mantle. You didn't ask for it. It just fell. Yes. That's right. And you're just doing you what see, he's called you. You see, you don't, you don't, you can't buy a gift. A gift is bestowed. Gifts are given mm -hmm. from someone who loves you. And once you, you know, I studied the process of gift giving. You know, your mother, ever since you were a little boy, when someone bestows a gift up, upon you, even when you know the gift is for you, even before the gift leaves the giver's hands, your mother taught you to do what? The very first thing, words come out of your mouth, and those words are, thank, thank you. you. That's your response. So our first response is, thank you, God. Then you take the gift, and whatever the purpose is of the gift, you begin to use it so that you can help fulfill the purpose of the gift. If it's a hairbrush, you brush your hair. If it's a trinket, you put it on your shelf and you enjoy it and you smile every time you pass it. Whatever the gift is, you use the gift for the purpose for which it was given. And then, so if God has given you a gift, your responsibility and your response is to use that gift to make God look good. That's, what, that's how I define giving him glory. You, when, you use that gift to make God look good. That's right. And see, we got it, we, we kind of got it twisted. We use the gift to make us look good. But God wants you to use the gift he gave you to make him look good. And then when you make him look good, he's going to make you look good. That's right. You see, but if you put things in priority, give God the glory that's due his name, and he will give you opportunities to make him shine. That's beautiful. Please don't stop mentoring. Amen. Please don't stop depositing what was put in you yes. into this generation. I um, often, I was talking the other day to several of our staff, and I was quoting a line from a movie back in the 80s, and one of the gentlemen spoke up and said, Pastor, I wasn't born until 93. And it, <laughs> I, I didn't realize at that particular moment, I felt old. Yes. I'm not going to kid you. I felt like, oh, my God, I'm not even that old, but I must be old. When you have to tell your kid that you're cool, you know you're not cool. Oh, yeah, you're not cool if you have to say, yeah, I'm, I'm cool. cool. Yeah, you're done. You're, you're not. You're done being cool. <laughs> but what I have found is that this generation, they're hungry for purity. Yeah. They're hungry for what you just said. They're looking for their place. Every generation has a sound, you know, that's that right. in worship. Yes. Every generation has their how, what style of music. That's why we have the 70s, 80s, even in secular. But in Christendom, it's the same it's way. It's the same. It's the same. There's a style, but somehow or another, you have managed to bridge the gap. And I think we have tapped into that one thing is that you just do your gift. Just do what God has given you. See, the challenge is for a lot of us, we, we don't um, embrace oftentimes what God has given us. Mm -hmm. And we look to somebody else to affirm us. That's right. Or we look to what they have and we become jealous. But there comes a season, uh, if you are a believer who really wants to grow in the Lord, where you find your true identity. And you realize that your identity is not in the culture. It's not in what people call you. It's not in what you do for a living. But your identity, your true identity, is found in the Lord because he created you. He's placed you here in the earth for a purpose. He's given you gifts and mm. talents. As a matter of fact, he's given you so many gifts you will never uh, maximize all the gifts he's given you in a lifetime. Mm. But the beautiful thing that he's given us is potential. That's it. Oh, I love the word potential because potential is latent power. Mm -hmm. Potential is stored up energy just waiting to be used. And I, I was in a, a 
crossing a, a busy street one day, trying to find uh, a way to, you know, just navigate the traffic, waiting for a break in the traffic. Well, traffic slowed up, and I began to cross the street. All of a sudden, a motorcycle came speeding down the street, heading mm. straight for me. When I saw that he was heading for me, preacher, I mean, I stepped into high gear. I ran across. This was just a few weeks ago. You were I, I was getting down, baby, running across the street, and I had to even break my, my speed when I got to the other side of the street. And the first words out of my mouth were, wow, I didn't know I had all that in me. <laughs> you see? And Wasn't that's what, that point pushed you to it? That's right. And that's what potential is. The potential is, wow, I didn't know I had all of that in me. You have all of that and more in you. Matter of fact, we have God's uh, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all yeah. we could ask or think according to the power that is at work within us. That's what God has given us. It's, it's the potential of heaven. It's God's potential on the inside of us. Wow. And you will never maximize that. You'll never, you'll never be able to use that in your life. But it's fun being able to discover new levels of the gifting that he's given you. Because when I first started out, I didn't, I, I didn't have this, um, this uh, dream of being a songwriter. Now, I've always wanted to be a singer. But I discovered songwriting in my mid-20s. I never in a million dreams, uh, never in a million years dreamed that I'd be teaching songwriting at, at Lee University. Uh, Eric Buxton was one of my students. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that beautiful? All that potential was on the inside. Already on the inside of me. Baby, you're amazing. Well, this is my this is my joy and privilege. I can tell. I love it. I could talk to you all night all long. day. I Thank love you, sir. it. You are a blessing to the kingdom. Amen. You're a blessing to my family. Blessed to be a blessing. You're blessed to the kingdom. We're about to go now. We're going to listen to some kids sing with some amazing potential. Little drummer boy, I promise you, this one's going to bless you. Come, they told me, pam, 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 pam. A newborn king to see, pam, 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 pam.
I told you you were going to be blessed. They are amazing, the talent that's been uh, bestowed before us tonight through the voices of Lee. Thank you so much, Danny, once again for leading us into worship through this wonderful Christmas music. In just a moment, I'm going to send you to prayer, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray with us in agreement that God would meet your needs. I know this is a season that uh, some people dread because of loss of loved ones or maybe the loss of um, maybe a divorce or maybe some tragedy happened during the Christmas season and you dread the season. But I want you to know that Christ is still the answer for whatever season, whatever struggle that you're going through. He is still the answer. He came as a babe, but he's no longer in a manger. He's no longer in a tomb. He's no longer hanging on a cross, but he's risen sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you right now that whatever need you have in your life, He will perform. Call on Him. Call that number. Let somebody agree with you. The Bible says if any two touch and agree, it'll come to pass. Watch this, and we'll be right back. I wanted to take just a few minutes and I wanted to share a story about Christmas. Many of us have heard every kind of Christmas message that we can think of about Christmas. It was in Luke 2 that the story, the story is in those days it came a decree from Caesar Augustus to, that all people should register for taxes. Everyone went to register. So Joseph went up to the town of Nazareth and he and Mary, who was promised to be married, they were uh, to expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for delivery and the child to give birth to the firstborn, wrapped him in straps of clothing or swaddling clothes, as one translation said, and laid him in a manger because there was no, pl no place or no room for him in the inn. And the scripture goes on to say that there were shepherds living and abiding in the field, keeping guard over the flock by night. And the angel appeared unto them, and they were terrified. And the angel said, Be not afraid. And he instructed them to go. And later on, there were wise men that came. You know the story of Christmas. But I want to talk about the manger, the manger and the stars of the manger. There were so many that were around the city. There were so many that were there for obvious reasons, to register for taxes, to do their deed that they had to do of that time frame. But there were stars at the manger. And the main star at the manger was Mary. Mary was the star of the show at this moment. She was um, not a prophet. She was not someone that was performing uh, duties in the temple. She was um, a humble young lady. She was a lady that was visited by an angel. And the angel instructed her that she would give birth, give birth by the conception of the Holy Spirit, that she would bring forth a child, and that she would call his name Jesus. 
Uh, and he was telling her about this miracle. But what that speaks to me to share with you is that God partners with you and I to do things that he wants to accomplish. A lot of us are sitting here saying, if God did, he would do this for me. But God partners with you and I. He is so intricately involved in our life that he wants you to be his partner in life, to empower you to perform his plan and his purpose. He chose this lady to bring forth his son here at the manger, and he wants to partner with you that your life, your dream, your destiny can come to pass. But not only was Mary at the manger, there was Joseph. Joseph was a star of the manger um, because he's in the process. Imagine this now. He's in process to be married to this woman. He's in process to take her to be his wife, and the process would take normally around a year, and they would live apart. There would be no physical contact. There would be no way of relationship to occur, and he hears Mary. Mary comes to him and says, Now, Joseph, I got a story I want to tell you. The angel of the Lord came. She had no idea whether Joseph was going to receive it or whether Joseph was going to reject the story. She had no idea, but she took the fortitude. She accepted the call. She went to Joseph and said, the angel said, I was going to bring forth this child. I was going to be miraculously carrying this child. It was going to be conceived of the Holy Spirit, and we're to call his name Jesus. And Joseph thought about this long and hard and he thought that he would just put her away privately. He wouldn't make a big deal about it, and he didn't want to embarrass her. And I don't know all the emotions that Joseph probably was having at the moment. There might have been anger. There might have been embarrassment. There might have been whatever array of emotions that one would have with that situation. But Joseph, another angel came and visited Joseph, and the angel said that this was of God and that Joseph was not to put her away that he was to keep her so the lesson that I get out of Joseph being at the manger is that obedience always ends well maybe God's calling you to do a ministry maybe God's calling you to step out in faith and some new business venture maybe God is saying that okay 17 is about the end 18 is going to be your year of new beginnings and you're afraid and you don't know if you can do it or not. But I can promise you obedience is better than sacrifice. Joseph was a star at the manger because he obeyed the voice of God. And I want to encourage you to obey what God is calling you to do. But then there's the shepherds. These shepherds, listen, this is, this is powerful to understand. They were stars at the manger because they were third shift workers on a dead-end job. They were working at the bottom of the bottom of the run, and yet God spoke to them and said, I want you to go, and I want you to bring a gift, and I want you to go, and I want you to be there when this takes place because there's something about this that I want you to be a part of. What that tells me is that God wants everybody at the party. God wants everybody there. He didn't want to exclude you no matter where you are in life, no matter what run of economics that you're at. You may feel like, well, I'm, I'm just not important. I'm, I'm not this or I'm not that. But Christ is saying that I want you there. I want you part of what I'm doing in the earth. I want you part of what I'm trying to accomplish within people's lives in this day. So don't let people count you out. Don't let circumstances dismiss you. Maybe you've been through a horrible divorce. Maybe you're going through a horrible situation on your job. Or maybe you've got kids that are, just aren't doing like they're supposed to be doing. And you're saying, I'm a failure as a parent. Or I'm a failure at this. Or I'm a failure at that. God is saying, I want you in the midst of what I'm doing in the earth today. There's, Mary was there because... She was obedient. She heard the voice of God. And these shepherds were there because they were there on divine appointment with God. And then there's the wise men. The wise men were stars at the manger. And they showed up. They came from the east to Jerusalem. And they were going to see and to be privy to what was taking place. And they got there just putting one foot in front of the other. 
I imagine every person that's watching, you've got some type of electronic device that if you're lost or you don't know where you're going, you get on your little device and you say, take me to wherever you're going. And that little device will take you down streets, whether they're back streets or main highways or whatever thoroughfare it is, and you don't have a clue where you're at. All you know is to follow that little voice that's in that little box telling you to turn right here and go right there. These wise men, they didn't know where to go, but a star appeared to them, and they began to follow the star. And the star led them all the way to the place of the manger. I want to encourage you. You say, well, pastor, I don't know where to go and I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to begin to get out of where I'm at to where I need to be. Let me tell you what to follow. Follow Jesus. Jesus, Babby sang it a few minutes ago, is still the answer for the world today. He's your peace. He's your joy. He's your understanding. He, the Bible says, is the way. When you don't know the way, he is the way. He's the truth and the way. Call on Jesus. That number's on the screen. There's prayer partners waiting to touch and agree with you that you too can be a star at the manger, that you can find your way and you can accept what God has for your life. You can invite him into your life. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I accept you. As my personal Savior, I'm sorry for all that I've done. You know what you did if you prayed that prayer? You begin to follow the star. You begin to follow Jesus. And as you follow Jesus, he will lead you into the perfect place, the place of peace, the place of harmony. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next time. God bless. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Pastor Tracy Stone from the Lawrenceville Church of God. And in just a moment, we're going to be interviewing Danny Murray from Lee University. And he has with him tonight the voices of Lee. They're going to be sharing in song. And what a beautiful uh, testimony of God's grace and mercy of talent he has bestowed upon them. And I just look forward to hearing, continuing to hearing what God is doing through their ministry 
They've got one song that has touched literally millions of people. He'll tell us about that maybe tonight. Maybe we can get that out of him. But we're just so encouraged to see God use young people that they are using their gifts and their talents for the glory of God. And I, I thank God for that. And there's a number that's on the screen. That number is there for you to call and to connect with somebody uh, in this season. I know it's a lonely season for many people. I have experienced great loss this year, but I know as well as you that if I call on the name of the Lord, he's able to minister to my needs. He said in his word, he's a present help in our hour of trouble. And I know that you can agree and touch God and he will help you throughout whatever struggle and whatever pain you're facing. I am. I love Christmas, don't you? It's a, it's a great time of the year. I love the, the snow that we had a few weeks ago, a few days ago. It's beautiful. I love that. I love all that God gives us in nature. And I love the sounds, the smells, the carolers. I even like to listen to the dinging of the bell when I walk by. It just gets me in the mood for Christmas. We're going to go and we're going to listen to the voices of Lee as they once again take us to a place in Christ and knowing. Mary, did you know? come to make you new and this child that you to a blind 
What a powerful song that is. That song ministers so much yeah. to me. Mary, did you know? Well, we are with the one and only Danny Murray. Thank you so <laughs> much. You. God good bless you. you. Thank you so much for bringing yeah. the voices of Yeah, oh, lead. man, we're having a good time. We it's really are. Been, it's been amazing so far tonight. And this ministry, tell us about voices and how God spoke that and what's, what's the whole thing because this well, is amazing. We started 23 years ago. And uh, Paul Kahn, you know, the president of Lee University, it was, he actually had the dream first. And he asked me to start a new group at Lee, and I did. And I, little did I know we'd start singing a cappella music, and it did. And we've been doing that for all these years and, and uh, rehearsing every day and then traveling on the weekends. And then this summer, we happened to release a couple of videos that went viral. Yes, and, I saw And, uh, man, it has just been a wonderful, wonderful few months. You know, it's just unbelievable. People are so hungry to be touched, you know. And uh, so these videos just had the touch of God on them. It was nothing that, that we could manufacture or nothing mm -hmm. that we could, a formula we could come up with. We were going to be off for a few weeks, and I told the kids, hey, why don't we do something and put it up on Facebook? So we had a guy come in there with a camera while we were in the studio singing, I'm no longer a slave, I'm a child of the king. And little did we know now, you know, it was 15, 16 million. So the next month we put out, oh, uh, what a beautiful name, that Hill song. Mm -hmm. And they tell me this week it's over 44 million views. Are you kidding me? Right. That is amazing. And I, I can't get my head around it. I can't because, you know, you, you think of all the people that sit down and watch that. But, you know, people say, oh, you want to be an Internet sensor? No, no. Trying to make money? No. And none of that. We just want it to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Here's what we got. A lady sends me a letter. She says, I don't know anything about you people. I don't know anything about your school. But I came across this video, and it moved me so much that I just, I had to take it and let my husband see it. All he can talk about doing is dying. He's been talking for months. Don't want to live. I wish I weren't here. She said, I sat him down in the living room and said, you're going to watch this. And then she wrote back, it saved his life. Wow. And we say, well, thank you, Lord, that you can take what we have in our hand and make it powerful because we can't do that. It's, it's amazing. It's the power of the gospel it is. through song. It's you guys are singing the message and it's a blessing. I've watched it through the years, grew up watching it, an adult watching it. And yeah. Your ministry has just been amazing. Well, thank you. The, the kids that, that come into the, to the program and they travel with voices, the, the impartation that you are able to give them, it's, it's amazing to watch after the fact when they are adults leading worship and... And moving on to have their own ministries. You know, it's all about the heart, though. We know that. Mm -hmm. You know, we knew that from the part of the country we grew up in. That's right. Our, na our needs are so basic. When I go to church, my <laughs> needs are so basic. I just want to feel the presence of God. That's it. You know. And so if you're going to do music in the church... Uh, yeah, well, well, you know, we like to have some fancy arrangements, but it's not about that. It's not about being slick. It's not, although we, we think that God should have the best and we're going to work hard enough and not give any excuses, but it's still about the heart. Does it touch the heart of the people? And thank God that people feel something, you know? That it, it is. You can feel it. And we have felt it tonight Amen. as you guys have sung and ministered and going to sing one more before we go in a few minutes. But the... The fame that you guys are lifting up is the fame of Christ, but you're doing it in secular settings. You're doing it in Christian settings. Tell, tell the audience of some of the things you guys have done. It's well, it's amazing. interesting. You know, we, uh, we have a chance to be in all kinds of settings. True. Conventions, a lot of conventions. The other night we were at the Opryland Hotel and sang to 8,400 junior high students. Yeah, hmm. I'm telling you, it was unbelievable. And, of course, we did an array of music, you know, that they would love, you know. These were uh, kids from the Beta Club. Okay. And, man, they were they were well-behaved, of course. You know, they're the smart kids in school. <laughs> I wasn't in that. I wasn't but, either. But they, uh, they enjoyed it. And then we started singing uh, songs of worship. And they took their cell phones out, you know, turned the lights on, started waving them. I'm telling you, it warmed my heart so much. That's amazing. Yeah. And then the other night, you know, we sing wherever we go. We, you know, when we, even after, if we go into a restaurant to eat, after we eat, we call the waiters and waitresses back and say, hey, you've been so nice to serve us. Could we give you something? You know, of course, we're going to give them a good tip. It's not that, but we want to get, and we give them the gift of music. We sing the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you. You know, a lot of times, some of the best ministry we do, we've had people to follow us outside and say, hey, you know, I appreciate you singing that. Uh, 
my son's really in the struggle. Would you pray with me about that? You know, mm. so, and it opens the door for people to, you know, trust you and understand. Somebody needs you today, wherever you are. Somebody you're going to, you know, I heard this the other day, this phrase, and I love it. Live life with an open hand. When you get up today, what are you going to say? God, help me, help me, do this for me. No, God, bring me into the path of someone that I can be a blessing to. Absolutely. Help me to help someone. That's beautiful. You guys have sung in political arenas. Oh, well. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Sung at the White House at Christmas. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. How was that experience? Oh, man, I'm telling you, by the time you get through all the machines, you know, and get you can get cleared, it's, it is amazing. But um, we're just so thankful, you know, that God's given us these opportunities because, you know, we believe the church ought to have the best, you know. And the church does have the best. And you see these kids that come from Lee and go to The Voice, you know, Jordan Smith, and now, you know, uh, Brooke. Brooke Simmons on there. Man, Man she's doing it, isn't she? She sang the other night, sang Amazing Grace, and I, I was with her parents the yes. next day. And I told Mike them, and I Jamil. said, yeah, I said, Mike, all those concerts, you drug that baby across the country to, and, you know, she's sleeping on church pews. And I That's said, right. now it's coming out in her heart. We can hear it. Yeah, you know, the they, touch were, of they God. were at our church a, um, a couple of years ago, and I said, Mike, you and Jamil can come as long as you bring Brooke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so She's they, flew a her in, they flew her in from Florida. Yeah. But yeah, that's, yeah. that's truly amazing. I have, um, I love watching the, the, the heart of the kids come through because you and I both know this generation needs God. It's true. And yeah. to watch young people that love the Lord so much, such an inspiration. Yeah, you know, we're seeing kids today at Lee who come with a great uh, desire to serve God, not just to wear the classification or the label of Christian, but they want to do something. When we have, we have World Missions Week, yeah, and, uh, and, and we'll take on a project somewhere around the world, and uh, I'm amazed to see these kids, how into it they get. They want to, they want to leave a, a, a lasting mark in the name of Jesus, you know. Yeah. And it's so encouraging to see the willingness to put their shoulder to the wheel, not just, you know, say, okay, I'm going to be a good Christian. I'm going to go to church on Sunday and Wednesdays. No, I'm going to do something to help change this world that's lost and dying for the sake of Jesus Christ. That, that is so true. I, I think the Great Commission, it, it's, it's, it is our commission, but it's, it's simply, and I see it demonstrated through the life of a voice, through the life of the voices of Lee, to know God, to find freedom, to discover their purpose, and you guys are going to make a difference. I see that demonstrated. Right. Well, we, we certainly pray. Because, you know, it's, um, we, we, we found this song. It says, you know, uh, I, when I get on my knees, I touch the sky. And for this generation to learn, you know, among all the hype and all the things that can happen in just an instant on the Internet or wherever and the fame that can come, that real success comes from knowing and loving God and allowing Him to chart your path for you. Wherever we sing, you know, we always get together and we pray. You know, we were on one of these shows. We were on America's Got Talent or something. They said, what's your ritual? We ritual? Get, yeah, we get together and pray before we go on and we say, we understand our steps are ordered by the Lord. There's a reason we're here. Somebody, somewhere in that audience needs one of your smiles, one of your testimonies, needs to hear how God provided the money for you to go to school, needs to hear how God healed your parents or whatever that, you're, that you celebrate. Somebody here needs it. Our, our steps order, not because we're special. Mm -hmm. No, take that off the table. We're nothing but just sinners saved by grace. We're here to be a blessing and let God somehow, let's reflect the love of Jesus. That, that's beautiful. I, I want to shift just a moment, if we could, because the kids are, are truly amazing, but they're only as amazing as, as the leaders and the former people that are forming their life. How was it? I mean, you're a talented man in and by yourself, the gifts that God gave you. How was it that God spoke to Danny Murray and said, okay, this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Hmm. You're going to pour into these young people. I mean, you yeah. bet that's, that's you. When I think of this, I think of Danny Murray. Yeah, well, I started actually traveling and putting groups together when I was in high school. I had a quartet. All the guys lived in different cities. I drove around and picked them up. We'd go sing, and I'd drive back around and, and take them back home on Sunday night, get home 3 o'clock in the morning. I missed every Monday of school. 
<laughs> Did you really? Yeah. Well, you know, my parents always said, you know, you're working for God. We're going to support you, you know. I was 15 years old when I fell across the altar. I really got disgusted because I was trying to, I was in a small church and trying to get people to come together and practice and be good. They just didn't want to, they didn't have the work ethic. Excellent. Yeah, that's it. They didn't want to work hard for it. They just want to get up and let it happen. I felt like God deserved better. I remember falling across the, the altar and, and saying, Lord, all I want is somebody to sing with. Years went along and went on to Lee, and of course, you know, from there, you know, was in the Lee Singers, and then on and to, to have my own groups, and then the different groups that I had from there, and then New Harvest that we had, you know, had all those kids that went on to have great careers. But one time we put together a group of teen talent winners mm -hmm. from the uh, from the international competition, and we took them on tour, and we were coming back from Florida to Atlanta. We were coming into Atlanta, it was about midnight, and I was driving one of the buses, you know? And uh, guess what came to my mind? I looked back in the rearview mirror and there's three or four buses full of talented kids, you know, just wanting to be something great for God. Guess what came to my mind that night on the altar? God reminded me, all you asked for was somebody to sing with. Now look in that mirror, all these people coming here that's beautiful. Under your leadership. And it, you know, and, it, and it made me realize how powerful God is and how faithful he is when he calls you. Now, I had several ladies in my church call me to preach. Yeah. Well, you know, I was, I was a real talkative kind of guy, and I was a little overweight and like chicken, so they thought I should be a preacher. <laughs> but, you know, I, it just wasn't, no, it wasn't for me. I, I knew God called me to do music, and I was going to stick with that, and I did all these years, and God's been so faithful. You know, 1978 it was, the first group I ever had of my own. They told me to start a group of students to recruit students. And on our first trip, we had a head-on collision down on I-59 in Gadsden, Alabama. And we thought that was the end. I thought that was the end for me. Serious, uh, life-threatening injuries. Stayed in the hospital there in Gadsden for a couple of months before they could even move me. And I thought that was it for me. I'd never go out again. I certainly wouldn't want to take anybody's children out. We had one young lady was killed that morning. Mm. And uh, I, I, I was so afraid, but God, once again, is so faithful. And now 40 years later, we're out here, you know, doing 21 Christmas concerts. That's uh, amazing. That, that truly yeah. is amazing. Yeah. And he is so good, you know, all he asks us to do is just bring what we have in our hand and he'll be faithful to multiply it. There are people that are, that are watching now and they've seen the bigger than life voices of Lee, the bigger than life stage presence. But to take the layer back just for a moment, I just wanna say thank you for letting them hear the real oh. Danny and behind, because behind every great ministry, there's that one moment. There's that Bethel experience where you take it back to when you and God um, experience that moment and see there never would have been a voices there never would have been all of the stuff that God has done through the years that have passed I think of all the talent we don't even, we can't sit here and talk about all the talent yeah. that's been through well, your yeah. hands and uh, influence but that is amazing that it all began at an altar yes sir maybe tonight you're watching and you're saying this is man this is too big this this group's too too massive talented there in your home, there in your local church, you can experience excellence. All you have to do is to take that one moment when you and God are speaking to each other and he's talking back to you and he gives you that word that he gave to Danny Murray. And here he is 40 years later as a testimony that God's grace, God's mercy, hadn't been easy, has it, Danny? No, a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work, but through it all, he has experienced the favor and the touch of God and you too can experience the same touch and the same favor that God has on this ministry. Because the beautiful thing about it, God's no respecter of person. That's it. What he did for them, he'll do for you. Right. He did it for me, and he did it in a way that I never thought was possible. I thought that I would never achieve what God had put in my heart as a young boy, walking on an old grass strip in North Carolina praying 
and the Lord called me to preach mm. at 15. Something right. about 15, the Lord begins to speak, and that's when he spoke to me, and I accepted that call and started evangelizing. You know, I carry my little black book, and I thought, <laughs> boy, they're going to book me up this year. And then I finally would leave. Hey, I'll pay you to let me come preach. <laughs> Just give me an opportunity. But <laughs> Yeah, those were the days. Or, but somehow God miraculously kept me, and he's used me. He'll use you. Yes. Take the number that's on the screen. Call it. A prayer partner's waiting there to pray with you, to believe God with you, that even in this season, this Christmas season, what beautiful Christmas music we've enjoyed and celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But maybe now, maybe you're asking, maybe God's talking to you, maybe he's calling you into a ministry, maybe he's calling you into something, maybe you're a young person, and you're saying, maybe I want to go to Lee. I sit here tonight as an alumni of Lee, my right. wife is an alumni of Lee, my entire family <laughs> went to Lee. I mean, we, we are, I have family that teaches at Lee. We're invested in that school, it's a tremendous school. But right now, at this particular moment, you can connect with God through prayer, prayer partners. Dial the number that's on the screen. We're about to go now to a powerful song that, that the voices of Lee are going to sing, and they're going to take us out. It's going to be a beautiful uh, expression of what God's going to do in, in the worship and lifting up the name of Jesus. So let's go now to as the voices of Lee leads us into Christmas time is here. Truly it is. God bless you. Thank you again, Danny, for being here. So good to be with you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. 